वेलकम फ्रेंड्स माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर चंद्रकांत शिवाजी आहेर इन सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ ऑफ माय वीडियोस वी लर्न दैट स्टेट फंक्शंस एंथैल्पी ऑफ फॉर्मेशन एंथैल्पी ऑफ कंबशन इन चैप्टर 1 दैट इज केमिकल एनर्जेटिक्स इन दिस थर्ड पार्ट वी स्टार्ट द न्यू टॉपिक एंथैल्पी ऑफ न्यूट्रलाइजेशन so what is the enthalpy of neutralization so we know neutralization reactions acid base react to form salt and water so when we consider enthalpy or heat for that neutralization reaction so it is defined as heat change heat change when 1 gram equivalent of acid is neutralized by 1 gram equivalent of base the reaction being carried out in dilute aqueous solution example when 1 gram equivalent of hcl is neutralized by noh or vice versa noh is neutralized by hcl in aqueous solution that is very important for the ionization of acid as well as base at that time this 57.1 kJ of heat is produced and this heat is called as a enthalpy or heat of neutralization for that acid base reaction so this hcl in aqueous medium noh in aqueous medium react to form nacl and water at that time this delta h is defined as a enthalpy or heat of neutralization and it is minus 57.1 kJ in some book they may write minus 57.3 kJ so this is the minus sign indicating heat is release thus the heat of neutralization of any strong acid for example hcl hydrochloric acid nitric acid sulfuric acid with strong base sodium hydroxide potassium hydroxide or vice versa is always the same that is 57.1 kJ why this heat release is constant so it is explained in next point strong acid strong base ionize completely in dilute solution 100% ionization so this noh is ionized as na plus oh minus hcl is ionized as h plus cl minus and undergo neutralization to produce again ion na plus cl minus and water molecule so this heat is constant why constant see this cancelling out the common ion on the both side we get this na plus is cancel with na plus cl minus cancel with cl minus what is the remain this h plus aqueous in ionic solution aqueous solution oh minus in aqueous solution combined to form water molecule so this is the overall reaction and for any strong acid and any strong base when we taken for 1 gram equivalent at that time this percentage or composition or concentration of h plus ion and oh minus ions are constant in 1 gram equivalent of acid and bases acid and bases and that it gives 1 gram equivalent of water and this heat is constant that is minus 57.1 kJ that is the reaction of h plus ion of acid and oh minus ion of base to neutralize to give this heat of neutralization next point when we consider this heat of neutralization for weak acid or weak base at that time see the change if the acid or base is weak the heat of neutralization is usually less than 57.1 kJ why this consider example this neutralization of weak acid like acidic acid with a strong base like noh so in this example we consider acid as a weak acid see the ionization of this weak acid acidic acid gives acetate ion and h plus ion so this reaction is reversible reaction why because this acid is a weak acid it undergo ionization in equilibrium this strong base that is noh undergo 100% ionization to form na plus ion oh minus so according to last side this acetic acid being a weak acid dissociate in equilibrium noh is a strong acid 100% ionization thus the h plus produce this hydrogen ion produced by acid is neutralized by oh minus of 
base in a OH the equilibrium shift to the right side see this H plus produced by acid is neutralized by OH minus of NaOH and as soon as this H plus is consumed for neutralization this reaction goes in forward direction to maintain this equilibrium and thus more amount of acidic acid undergo ionization the equilibrium shift to the right side hence the neutralization is used for intern of acidic acid this neutralization is used for dissociation of acidic acid and hence it is less than 57.1 kilojoule so this heat produced during neutralization is some reaction some amount of heat is used for dissociation or ionization so this is wrong this is ionization or dissociation of acidic acid hence it is less than 57.1 kilojoule now we consider this different kind of heat or enthalpy of reactions first heat of en heat of solution or enthalpy of solution so when we consider this heat change when one mole of substance is dissolved in the large volume of solvent the solvent quantity is larger sufficient greater that time further increase of solvent does not produce any more heat change in solution so whatever may be the heat is released during dissolution is constant after addition of large amount of solvent so that heat constant heat or that he release heat is called as a heat or enthalpy of solution for that substance see heat change may be heat evolved or it may be heat absorbed sometime it is evolved minus sign it is absorbed plus sign this heat or enthalpy of solution of a substance in a particular solvent so for particular substance in particular solvent that heat remains same when we change substance or we change the solvent this heat may change there are two type of heat of solution first is integral heat of solution this heat change that occurs for a specific quantity of solute is dissolved in specific quantity of solvent under the given condition of temperature and pressure second is a differential heat of solution it is a heat of solution of a solute at a specified concentration of a specified temperature and pressure condition is the heat change observed per further mole of solute dissolved in such a large quantity of solution that no significant change is concentration occur so by increasing the volume or percentage of solute sorry percentage of solvent at that time there is no change in concentration is observed second is a heat of hydration the heat change it may be evolved or absorbed when one mole of substance anhydrous salt that substance must be anhydrous condition anhydrous salt combined with the required number of moles of water so as to change into hydrated salt is called as a heat of hydration so see for example this copper sulfate is solid state anhydrous condition when it combined with five water molecule at that time this whole composition become hydrated copper sulfate again it is solid but this anhydrous copper sulfate is converted into hydrated copper sulfate again solid at that time this heat change minus 78.2 kJ this heat change is called as a heat of hydration so for heat of hydration of copper sulfate or one mole of copper sulfate this heat is constant minus 78.2 kJ per mole per mole third is a heat of fusion delta h of fusion the heat change takes place when one mole of solid substance change into liquid state solid is converted into liquid state at a melting point solid undergo melting solid to liquid for example water when we consider it in solid state ice it goes converted into liquid form at that time whatever may be the heat absorbed see either is a heat is absorbed plus sign for melting of water so the delta h is plus 6 kJ and this heat of fusion or ice melting point to 78 so 
सेवेंटी थ्री केलवीन इज प्लस सिक्स किलो जूल पर मोल पर मोल वन मोल ऑफ आइस फोर्थ इज हीट ऑफ वेपराइजेशन द हीट चेंज टेक्स प्लेस वेन अगेन वन मोल ऑफ लिक्विड इट चेंजेस इन टू गैस स्टेट वेपोराइजेशन लिक्विड गोज इन टू वेपर स्टेट एट इट्स बॉइलिंग पॉइंट नैचुरली सो दिस लिक्विड वॉटर अंडर गो गैसियस फॉर्म बाय हीटिंग नैचुरली द हीट मज बी सप्लाइड एंड दैट हीट सप्लाइड इज डेल्टा एच एंड इट इज प्लस फोर्टी पॉइंट सेवन किलो जूल सो इन दिस केस दिस हीट इज एप्स ऑफ फॉर दिस वेपोराइजेशन रिएक्शन एंड दैट हीट रिक्वायर्ड टू चेंज वन मोल ऑफ लिक्विड वॉटर इन टू गैसियस वॉटर दैट हीट इज प्लस फोर्टी पॉइंट सेवन किलो जूल एंड इज कॉल्ड एज अ हीट ऑफ वेपोराइजेशन and this boiling point of water is we know 100 degree centigrade that is 373 kelvin next is a heat of sublimation the heat change takes place when one mole of solid changes directly into vapor phase so solid to vapor phase at a given temperature below its melting point so here this solid do not melt below the melting point this solid directly converted into vapor phase or gas phase example is this iodine solid iodine when we heated it goes into vapor iodine at that time this delta h is plus 62.39 kilo joule this much amount of it is required to convert solid into gas form that is for sublimation of solid iodine this it is absorbed it so plus sign the heat of sublimation of iodine is 62.39 kilo joule per mole next slide new topic that is bond enthalpy or bond energy so we know different theories for bond formations when bond is formed at that time it undergo stabilization and energy is release when we consider breaking of bond at that time bond is broken by supplying the required amount of energy so here are two definitions for bond enthalpy or bond energy first is average amount of energy release when one mole of bond is formed from isolated gaseous atom so bond is form undergo stabilization so energy is release for same type of bond when we consider in reverse direction this amount of energy is required or absorbed when one mole of one mole of bond is broken so as to get a separated gaseous atom so when we go in reverse direction this amount of energy required is same but sign is change this form energy is release minus sign or bond breaking energy is required absorb that is plus sign so energy is same in forward direction energy release backward direction energy is absorb in diatomic molecule for example hydrogen h2 hcl hbr the bond energy is equal to the dissociation energy of molecule this two hydrogen atom undergo dissociation to two hydrogen atom hcl dissociate to one hydrogen one chlorine hbr dissociate to one hydrogen one bromine but for a polyatomic molecule for example methane ch4 the bond dissociation energy of four ch bonds are different thus as average values is taken we consider four energies for four bond at that time it is divided by four and we get this average energy for bond dissociation of ch bond bond dissociation of hydrogen molecule hh bond is 436 kJ per mole and for ch bond this is average energy it is 414 kJ per mole why it is different so when bond one bond is broken at that time this carbon get charge and these three bonds are different than first bond again another bond is broken again this molecule goes in ionic state and again this bond strength is different so bond energy is different so in this case we consider this average value for that polyatomic molecules this heat of reaction can be calculated from bond energy data as 
this delta H. Heat of reaction is equal to summation of bond energies of reactant minus summation of bond energy of products. So this equation is very good equation for calculating the enthalpy of reaction when we have the bond energies of reactant and product. For this we consider this example problems calculate the enthalpy change for reaction this hydrogen gas combined with bromine gas to form a two molecule of HBr gas given that this bond energies of hydrogen HH bond energy HBr Br bond energy and HBr bond energies are 435 192 and 364 kilojoule per mole respectively so for this reaction bond energies are given for diatomic molecules and they ask to calculate the enthalpy change of reaction so by previous slide this equation we know so directly use this formula this delta H of reaction is equal to summation of bond energy of reactant minus summation of bond energy of product so in first summation there are two product bond energy of HH bond it is one mole so we consider one time plus second reactant bond energy of BRBR bromine bromine that is 192 minus bond energies of product so product side we have only one HBR molecule but in two moles so two time of that bond 2 into bond energy of HBr so we put these values HH energy BRBR energy minus 2 into bond energy of HBr that is 364 2 into 364 after calculation we get this final answer that is heat of reaction is equal to minus 101 kilojoule per mole so this enthalpy of react enthalpy change for this reaction formation of hydrogen bromide this reaction this enthalpy change is negative and this enthalpy change enthalpy of reaction is minus 101 kilojoule per mole and this minus sign indicate energy is released thank you friends in next video we go to the next topic so this is my third video in fourth video we go for the next topic of this chapter that is chemical energy next topic of this chapter that is chemical energy and this next, next point, point is resonance energy. energy thank, thank you friends. friends see, see this is my videos, videos on, on my, my channel, channel. Subscribe, subscribe it and, and I, I hope, hope all students, students must understand, understand my language, language. in, in future, future we go for better videos then thank you